We'll do the fourth Sunday of Advent. we we'll here again in Sparta here, Augusta. In the epistle for this fourth Sunday of Advent, taken from St. Paul's first letter, Corinthians chapter 4. Brethren, let a man so account of us as, as of the ministers of Christ and the dispensers of the mysteries of God. Here now it is required among the dispensers that a man be found faithful. But to me it is a very small thing to be judged by you or by man's day. But neither do I judge my own self. For I am not conscious to myself of anything, yet I am, am I not yet not hereby justified. But he that judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge not before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of hearts, and then shall every man have praise from God. And then the Gospel, taking that according to St. Luke chapter 3. But now in the fifteenth year of the reign of, of, of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and Philip his brother, Tetrarch of Eturia, and the country of Trachonites, and Lysanias, Tetrarch of Abilina, under the high priests, Annas and Caiaphas. The word of the Lord was made unto John, the son of Zachary, in the desert. And he came into all that country about the Jordan, preaching the baptism of penance for the remission of sins. As it was written in the book of the sayings of Isaiah the prophet, <clears throat> a voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, <clears throat> and the rough ways plain, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Those are the words of today's holy God. Heavenly Father, it's only goes to men. Two considerations on this fourth Sunday of Advent, as you looked at in multiple ways. Remember, the word Advent means the preparing means the coming, the coming of our Lord, Adventus Domini, the Advent of the Lord. The Lord is coming, and also when you think of the word Advent, it doesn't just mean coming, but the the when we say that word Advent, even in English, Advent means something more than a person is coming, a time is coming, an age is coming, something powerful is coming. And also the word Advent signifies that there's an urgency and there's a closeness to the coming. That the Lord is coming soon. So the word Advent means to come on, to come towards. That there's a movement of Advent that not only when we say I am the Lord is coming, there's a movement towards. That we should be moving towards God and he is moving towards us, that there's an advent, and that the advent is a double movement. And we consider in the season of advent that we are preparing for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, especially when he comes to judge us at the end of the world. We remember the 20, 2,000 years ago, when 2,020 years ago, on December the 25th, our Lord Jesus Christ was born and became visible to us in the flesh. And 33 years later, he came in his redemption and died the on the cross for our sins. And we remember that coming of the Lord. But we are preparing for the coming that is in ahead of us. And this coming is in two sides. The Adventus, the Advent, the, ve the Veni is the coming and coming towards. So that I am coming towards Jesus Christ. We are running towards him. And he is coming towards us. There is a double movement the history of the world is going on. When the judgment is very different to the damned than it is to the just. The just, when they are, they are running to the judgment, because when they arrive there, eye is not seen, ear is not heard, neither is entered the heart of man, but God is prepared for those that love him. That's what it is for the just. We are, whereas the unjust, those living in sin, those who know that when they meet Jesus Christ are going to be met by his anger and his wrath, these are the ones who always want to stay 18 years old. These are the ones who always want to take a little extra medication, who want to delay the coming of the judge. They want to delay, 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 because they know that when he comes, he's going to be very angry. And when he comes, it's going to be the beginning of eternal misery. And therefore, let him come 
very far in the future. Let him come very far in the future. We don't want him to come now. And hence, uh, there are many jokes that are based upon this worldly notion of the coming. Like they, that, you know, do they play baseball in heaven? One, two guys said to ask if they play baseball in heaven. And they uh, only promised when one of them died, he would come back and tell the other one if he played baseball in heaven. And sure enough, one of the friends died, and he went into heaven. Came back the next day, he said, yeah, they play baseball. i got good news and bad news. What's the good news? Good news is we play baseball in heaven every day. What's the bad news? Tomorrow you're starting pitcher. So why is it bad news? Because the next day, he's going to heaven. This is the way we look at the Advent. It shouldn't be bad news that the next day I'm going to heaven. That very joke is considered funny. That joke is considered a joke. Why? Because we want heaven so long as it's far away. Do we want it? Is the Advent part of my life? Am I going towards heaven? If I'm going towards heaven and I'm running to heaven, then I should not be like that. should rather be like the young sister who was 19 years old or 20 years old. And when she was a little baby, she saw Mother Mariana. Mother Mariana was about to die in the 1600s, a great saint of 400 years ago. And the little girl, who was 19-year-old, 20-year-old sister, was weeping that Mother Mariana was leaving her. You cannot leave us. You promised me that you will not die and go to heaven without me. And she wept at the deathbed of Mother Mariana and commanded her, You must never leave without me. Promise me that I will go to heaven the same day as you. And finally Mother Mariana said, All right, you are 19 or 20 years old, but I promise that on the day that I die and go to heaven, you shall also die and be with me in heaven. As soon as she received that promise, all her tears went away. Her sorrow was completely gone, and she was filled with the greatest joy. So much of the other sisters said, you are the most weeping of all the sisters that were losing our mother. She said, you're losing your mother, but I'm not losing mine. When she dies and goes to God, I will die the same day. And therefore, she was so happy. When Mother Mariana died, no one noticed the little 19-year-old girl when it laid down in her bed, and then she died. And they found her in a most peaceful death because she wanted the coming of the Lord. We say we want the coming of the Lord, and we're supposed to be going towards Him, and He is coming towards us. What is really happening on the Day of Judgment? Christ is coming down, and what does Isaiah say? Remember, this is the same Isaiah, the great prophet. He's like the St. John of the four prophets. He flies above Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Like St. John flies above uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. St. Matthew, St. Mark, and St. Luke. We see things with the most divine perspective. And Isaiah said, Who hath believed our report? Isaiah chapter 53. To whom is the mind of the Lord revealed? Nobody believes my teaching. Nobody believes our report. And that Christ is in such sorrow, he is in great sorrow, he is a scorn of men. That's Isaiah. But the same Isaiah says, a child shall lead us. We're going to be led by a child. And also, what's going to happen on that final day? Isaiah looked at the final day of judgment, and he said, what's going to happen on the final day? What is all flesh going to see? And then it says, every, every valley shall be filled. And every mountain and hill shall be brought low. The crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways plain, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. There is St. John repeats the words of Isaiah. What's going to happen? The crooked is going to be made straight. The rough is going to be made smooth and plain. The valleys that were so down in the darkest pits, they're going to be brought up high. The mountains that are so hard to climb, they're going to be brought down. And everything is going to be clear and plain. And there'll be no place to hide. There'll be no one that's outside the light. There'll be no place of forgottenness. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. That was what's in the mind of Isaiah. And what did our Lord Jesus Christ say? There's going to be a day of judgment. There's going to be a day when I come to judge the world. And what is that day going to be like? It's going to be a day of wrath and a day of ire when the world shall melt in fire. So says the Deaziri. And the judge is going to come and burn the world up in fire. 
Well, what's going to happen at the end of that day? When the fire is burnt and the fire has completed its burning, we're going to look at the world after that fire. On the very day of judgment, in the morning the fire shall come and it shall burn up terribly all flesh. In the afternoon, what are we going to see? No stain of sin. No imperfection. Not even the drop of the smallest ugliness anywhere in the world. All that fire is a purifying fire that will come on the last day and it will wipe out every single evil and every single thought of evil and every single stain of evil and everything that's been touched by evil. It shall all be wiped away. The crooked shall be made straight. The rough shall be made plain by that fire. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. And all flesh is going to be brought up, brought to the valley of Josephat. And all flesh is going to be there on the right and on the left side of our Lord, and they shall see the salvation of God. The just are going to see a salvation and be rejoicing at the advent of the Lord. And the damned, for a brief time, shall also see a salvation, which they shall not participate in, and then they shall be brought down below the earth, bodies and souls to be forgotten and crushed forever, 4,000 miles beneath our feet, in the very center of the earth, in that place it is called hell, of darkness and fire and pain and forgetfulness. And all flesh, both the good and the just, as well as the evil and the wicked, the good and the damned, they are both going to see the salvation of God. And then there shall be peace and happiness all about. All flesh is going to see the salvation of God. If I have God inside my heart, I should not be overly worried about that. And what is happening when his judgment comes down upon me? When the father spanks a child, he's having judgment. When he, when he corrects a child and yells at him, there is a judgment. But what is this judgment? It ends quickly. Like Laura Ingalls Wilder pointed out, she had learned about her father. And the, 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 that her father used to be angry with her when she would commit a crime. And then she would be beaten. She would get a spanking. And as soon as the spanking was over, the, the father would pick up his violin, his fiddle, and started playing his fiddle. He did not remember that he even punished her for any kind of crime. And he was back to his completely normal, joyous self. And she said, when I did something wrong, I began to long for the spanking. Because I knew that the second I got the spanking, it was over. And the second I got the spanking, it was forgotten. And the second the spanking was finished, there was back to pure joy in my father's face, pure joy and pure music and happiness everywhere in our house, and I began to long for the spanking. Why? Because it would quickly come, quickly end, and be forever forgotten. I deserve spanking for my sins. You deserve spanking for yours. We all deserve a spanking. We all deserve whatever difficulties come our way. But if we love God, and we are longing for His coming, and we are running to Him in this Advent, by which I run to God, and God is coming to me, I will long for the spanking, because it's only a small spanking, and it doesn't hurt that much, and it doesn't leave any marks. And when the spanking is finished, all the sorrows are gone. And inside of my own soul are all these things of which Isaiah speaks. And St. John the Baptist speaks, uh, re 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 uh, re repeating the words of Isaiah the prophet, A voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight his paths, every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. There is a valley of my discouragement and my depression, and my depth of the, going to the depth of sin. Every mountain that it seems we can't overcome in order to become pleasing to God, and grow in the right path of virtue, and hill shall be brought low, it should become easy. The crooked ways of my, 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 my devious will shall be made straight. The rough ways of my difficult ways of doing things shall be made plain. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. That's a very beautiful thing that's going to happen when Jesus Christ the judge comes. He's now judging our nation. He's judging the world. And there's going to be a judgment and there will be a spanking. And there will be difficulties and trials. But what is going to be the end of these trials? 
of this wickedness of Joe Biden and the wickedness of trying to steal this election and the wickedness of the masks and the wickedness of the vaccines that are there to poison and kill us. The wickedness of the laws that are being put into place to take away all the little things that we do have. All this wickedness is being allowed by God to remind us the devil doesn't give us anything good. All good comes from God. And to remind us to return back to him. And when we do that, it should be brought to an end quickly. And remember what says uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary. There will be a great trial. There will be a great tribulation. We're in the beginnings of its visibility right now. But it shall end quickly. And there shall be the rejoicing of the victory of Mary in the time of peace. And then at the end it will happen again when the Antichrist comes. When the Antichrist comes later on, the same thing will happen again. Only that will be a permanent peace of the whole world. And all flesh shall be brought to the valley of Josephat. And the wicked, that everything shall be made clean. All shall be fixed. All shall be taken care of. So we must understand this to be the case as we prepare for the coming of the Lord. Let us make sure that we run to him as he is running to us. And a little bit of judgment on that day in which we must be judged by Lord, will not be, the Lord would not be so bad if we just maintain his faith and love in our hearts and run towards him and recognize that we deserve a little thanking we get for our, for our sins. And it will never be a great spanking. It will never be so hard. The Lord won't allow that. And so in any case, we must prepare for that coming of the Lord with all our hearts and run to his coming and not be worried about a few little struggles between now and then. Really, God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.